pumpkins. That's a sign of fall. It's also the holiday Halloween that some people observe and they carve these up and make jack-o'-lanterns. And you'll notice this is a nice small one. These are the sweetest. The smaller they are, usually the sweeter they are. Now, most people think of pumpkins as orange, but I wanna show you a different color. Down here I have some assortment of pumpkins. This is white. They can also be gray. They can also be red and yellow. In my store, they had orange, and this is the knobby ones with these interesting things. I think they look really like Halloween. And then this one's kind of a yellow orange. They didn't have any of the yellow ones at my store, but there could be some at yours. Now, pumpkins are one of the winter squashes, and they are different in the fact that there's a lot more space inside with a lot less meat for the size that it is. And these can get huge, over a thousand pounds. So the main difference and the reason how you can tell a pumpkin from the other winter squash is this. It's their stems. You see how hard they are? And they have parts of it, you see ridges in it? This is hard, really, really hard. The winter squashes don't get that. They usually don't even have the stem showing because they pluck them and the stem comes off. You do want to buy a pumpkin with a stem on. And they can be, you know, different colors. They can be different number of little lines in them. But you do want to have at least that, that part covered where it is. So I guess the hardest thing about a pumpkin is how do you get into it safely? So I'm going to show you that first. And we're going to use the little ones because they're the best for eating. But the big ones have bigger seeds. So it depends on why you want a pumpkin. I want to move these huge things out of the way. So you can see what I'm doing. So this is a little pumpkin and this would be the same for any of the pumpkins. And you, you don't do a pumpkin the same way as you do winter squash because of the seeds inside. So you take a knife and you just push down and then you pull it up. And then you next to it you push down and pull it up. And that way you don't have to worry about sawing towards your hand. You know, I don't want you to cut your hand off or anything. And so you just keep turning the pumpkin and pushing down and inside. And you do want a sharp knife, not a serrated knife for this. And then we're going to be all the way around. Another reason why I chose to do the little one so we could have less time around. Okay, and then we just pull that up. And then what's going to come out with it? The seeds. Save the seeds. Pumpkin seeds are very good for you. So I just usually have a bowl that's available that I pull the seeds off into. It has water in it because usually the fiber part's gonna float away from the seeds. Not necessarily, but probably. So now we've got this and we have a hole inside and you can see inside and see the seeds. And the bigger one, of course, you got bigger seeds. So now I'm going to pretend like I'm gonna bake or steam this. And so I just cut down the sides and I turn it. You want to do this into like five or six pieces just because you don't want to have to have any cutting towards you. You want to cut down toward the cutting board. And then we're going to pull it apart. And there we go. We have the inside of our pumpkin. We're just going to break these into pieces. And then I'm going to take my ice cream scoop, which I think is the best thing for getting seeds out of winter squashes, and just scrape that into the bowl. And then I would do that to all the parts, of course, because that is one of the reasons why after the main part of Thanksgiving is over and they start putting all the pumpkins on sale, good reason to buy them is for the seeds. And so now, so that I don't have to peel it now, it's kind of hard to peel. It's just like the other winter squash. The skin is really close. And see, I'm having to really try to peel it. So instead of doing that, because you know I'm the easy cook, I'm just gonna take these pieces and I'm gonna lay them into a baking dish that has enough space for them. And you might have to do one or two baking dishes full. You could also steam them uh, by laying these pieces on a steamer and steaming them. I find the baking is easiest because I can put a whole bunch in at one time. Um, you bake that about 350, depends on how many pieces you put in there, how thick your pumpkin is. But the, um, you wanna do about 350, probably an hour. 
and you'll just test it with a fork. And then you can mash that up or um, make it into little balls. You can make it into pumpkin puree to make the pumpkin pie. You know, it comes in cans and it's just pumpkin. That's one of the best vegetables there is in a can. When you're baking the squash to make, I mean the pumpkin, to make it into pumpkin pie, you want to be sure that it comes out to this texture, that it will stand. If it's soupier than that, then your pumpkin pie will be rather runny. Now, the other thing you can use a pumpkin for is to make it into a tureen. So I'm going to bring this honking one right here. And what I've done is I've cut the top, and now I'm going to take this out, and there's my seeds. And then what I would do is I would scoop out the rest of the seeds, and then you can put like a stew or a soup in here, and you got to be sure that this fits in your oven. Be sure you get one that's the right height for the oven, and then stick it in the oven and bake it about 350. Um, the skin, as you will notice, the meat is really thick here. And so at the meantime, you'll be cooking the pumpkin, as well as the ingredients. So most people use like a meat kind of stew to put in here and then the pumpkin becomes the vegetable. But it usually stays on the side until you scrape it off. It's a good way to have an entertaining way to do it during the fall for Thanksgiving, Christmas, any of the holidays in the winter and fall because these are available through January and February because they're a winter squash. Now, the one thing that you need to remember is that you need to be sure and wash off the pumpkin before you cut into it, just like any of the melons. And you know, the, in the stores nowadays, they're pretty clean. But when I got this one, look at it. It's not really clean. And so this I would put underneath the running water to be sure I get all the dirt off. Because once you push the knife into the pumpkin, you can push the dirt down into the pumpkin and you're not gonna get it out. So be sure you wash them first. Pumpkins are very high in beta carotene and vitamin A, as you can tell by their colors. And be sure you enjoy these pumpkins because they are one of the best buys in the fall in the stores. So go to my website and find out more information.